yeah, I got the game all in my hand. Ooh, and yeah. Hello, and you are now tuned in to the only universe mode that matters. I am Christian. And no, I'm Jesse. And Jess, SmackDown Live just presented a hell of a pay per view with Judgment Day. Take the floor, my man. Yeah, uh, honestly, from top to bottom, pretty good pay per view. I like the way it turned out. Uh, on paper, it, it, always, it always is tough when you come off a, uh, a joint pay-per-view and then you're stuck with a two-week build and you're like, oh damn, like, what am I going to do? What matches am I going to have? What titles are going to be defended? What rivalries are going to be on the card? But I made it work. Uh, I, I executed it well and, and the card came out pretty good, to be honest, if, if you're asking me off of a, uh, of a two-week build. Had some big wins, some big moments, some surprises as well. But uh, from top to bottom, I'm satisfied with how the pay-per-view turned out. Yeah, as somebody who, when I'm playing this, I, I'm kind of just a companion piece. I'm, I'm a puzzle into your storyline. And sometimes it works out in your favor. Sometimes mm -hmm. I ruin any type of momentum you had, hence carrying Cross, hence even your main event. Mm -hmm. But Jesse, for today's show, I have to say, I was thoroughly impressed. I liked a lot of the performances I've seen. We're gonna break it down match by match. But I'm gonna be honest, as that companion piece, I'm the manager of Raw, you are the guy for SmackDown. Mm -hmm. I want your thoughts, I want you to keep it raw with me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna almost act as an interviewer. The fans have been liking the post shows, mm -hmm. and I wanna keep that trajectory up, Jesse. So, to start it off, what did you think of your opening match? Your tag team division is wide open, New Day are your champions. But ultimately, we saw the Dirty Dogs roll up, strong style, mm -hmm. and declare a victory. What did you think of the match? Were you happy with the outcome? Share uh, some thoughts. I was Dirty Dogs in the match. Obviously, strong style. Had a, a big debut at Unforgiven. Uh, Ryder Strong and Shinsuke Nakamura, um, obviously partnering up to become the, the tag team in a strong style. They beat Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory the way. Uh, only 1-0, and and then obviously we had Dirty Dogs go against them tonight and just didn't go their way. Roderick Strong and Shinsuke Nakamura really didn't have too much going on. Uh, I know the Kinshasa got reversed. I believe it was by Dolph Ziggler. I, I did hit an end of heartache. Mm -hmm. um, chaos did erupt in the ring. Yes. When you lose with a roll-up, I know obviously the L is on your record. Mm -hmm. Does it hurt a little less? Uh, I feel like it's just as equal getting pinned on the mat after obviously you getting hit by the finish because getting rolled up, I feel like is somewhat embarrassing. You know, you know what I mean? Because if, if you lose to a guy straight up, like shoulders down to the mat, and you eat his finisher, you put the guy over, yeah, but at the same time, like... You were defeated. You, yeah, and at the same time, if you get rolled up, like, that's an embarrassing loss for you to carry on with, and Roderick Strong has to uh, put up with that, and Shinsuke Nakamura was tangled up with Robert Roode, throwing him over the ropes. By the time he turned around, the ref already hit, uh, it, obviously, for the three count, and Dirty Dogs came up with the victory there. I have a few good victories on the season are, already. Are they the number one contenders right now, or yeah. can you not say that yet? Yeah. No, I can say that, honestly, probably for at least a few more weeks, probably even past the Cyber Sunday. Uh, obviously, I want to see Dirty Dogs more. I would like to see The Way in some action. They're going to be going against Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo. Maybe the next Smack SmackDown, but if not the next SmackDown, the following SmackDown. I want to continue to see my SmackDown tag team division develop. I would like to see Street Profits have another match and maybe another tag team, but who knows? Because New Day, obviously they, they want to match, obviously to defend their throne and defend those tag team championships. But uh, when you don't have a clear cut number one contender, I'm not going to force them to have a match against Dirty Dogs, who obviously looked great tonight, but I can say the same thing of Angel Barza and, and Humberto Carrillo looking good uh, previously on the, uh, the last SmackDown. But uh, I'm not gonna force feed anything. I'm gonna obviously the, let my division continue to grow. When, okay, so we'll better, see. better question is, and we can get on to the next match afterwards. When do you see the time frame of New Day defending? Uh, we just worked out in our head, you know, together off air, um, our pay per view slate. Mm -hmm. When do you see it? Can you see it on that sort of SmackDown soon, you think? Or? Possibly, but I think New Day could probably most likely defend at the pay-per-view after Cyber Sunday. That way I have the tag team 
division really thought out and I have a clear cut uh, team that could go against the New Day at our next pay-per-view after Cyber Sunday. But don't sleep on me having New Day defend the championships on a SmackDown because I've defended SmackDown uh, championships on SmackDown before this season and it will definitely happen throughout the, the rest of the season. Yeah. So, but I might give New Day the, the big match at, at a, a big pay-per-view after Cyber Sunday. Fair enough, fair enough. And speaking of a big match, Pete Dunne, yeah. AJ Styles. Good match. The match that we already saw on a SmackDown card. Mm -hmm. We talked about it during the match. We did see Pete Dunne, whether you want to call it a fluke, whatever have you, lose the first match by pinfall, even though his foot was under the rope, could have mm -hmm. been considered a rope break by all means. Was it called? Nope. Today, on the other hand, he came back a different man, a different breed. And this time, AJ Styles got a uh, better end mm -hmm. of his day. Yeah, multiple times. Uh, I think the first match was a little bit more competitive. Uh, Styles Clash was hit on Pete Dunne multiple times, phenomenal forearm, bitter ends were hit on AJ Styles in the first match. I can argue what AJ Styles did to Pete Dunne the first match, Pete Dunne just did to AJ Styles the second match. Yeah. I, I would agree, but Pete Dunne made it a little bit more competitive from what I remember in the first match. AJ Styles, yeah, he looked good tonight, but like he really couldn't hit the phenomenal forearm because every time I got on the side of the ring or on the top turnbuckle to really do any type of high flying maneuvers because AJ Styles is very athletic and I want to see what type of damage I could do on the, the top rope or hitting the phenomenal forearm on the side of the apron. Every time I tried to do that, Pete Dunne kicked up and caught me. He honestly always had an answer for AJ Styles in the match, reversing me multiple times off of uh, double reversal moves, countering beautifully, and uh, kind of just ripping me limb by limb and he hit the bitter end. And AJ Styles had no answer for it. Pete Dunne with probably his best victory of the season beating AJ Styles. And after the match, Pete Dunne got the steel <laughs> steps, threw it in AJ Styles' face, and then he powerbombed him and then just walked away to the locker room. So, leading into my next question, part three? Question uh, mark? It's questionable, yeah. Uh, I might have a different idea for both of these guys, but obviously 50-50 uh, booking with AJ Styles having the first victory and Pete Dunne with the second. I would imagine we get to see a third match down the line, the probably at another pay-per-view. The SmackDown roster is only so big. I That's imagine true. regardless, these two gentlemen will face off one day, one way, one other. Yeah, I, I would imagine they'll be at another pay-per-view because uh, I wouldn't want to have their trilogy be on, on a SmackDown, but anything is uh, is possible. But it could be a cool main event for a SmackDown with a stipulation. It, it could be. It could be. I mean, that stipulation could also happen at a big pay-per-view down the line. So I like AJ Styles and I like Pete Dunne, and those are just very key names to put on a pay-per-view and sell tickets. So uh, we'll, we'll see about the trilogy. Definitely will happen this season, but maybe not as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, in the third match of the evening, we mm. get to see Alexa Bliss defending her title against Charlotte Flair. And uh, this was a little bit more competitive than the this, first one. I mean, I guess we'll talk about matches of the night and moments of the night a little mm -hmm. bit later. But Jesse, when you talk about um, your only championship match of the night, this felt like a championship match. Yes. It definitely did. Alexa Bliss and Charlotte Flair, they, they know each other for a long time. Obviously, in the first match, Alexa Bliss really had every answer for Charlotte Flair's defense and stealing the title away from her. But uh, this time, Charlotte Flair made it a little bit more competitive. She hit the natural selection on Alexa Bliss. But in the end, Alexa Bliss obviously defended her throne and is still the SmackDown Women's Champion. But... During that match, I thought for a second I might have hit the blackout and the lights went out, but no. Bailey's music went off. She came down with her Money in the Bank briefcase, which she won two or three weeks ago, and looked like she was about to cash in, and we were shocked because I didn't know who was coming down to the ring. It wasn't planned. Uh, I didn't even know Bailey was in the locker room, to be honest. It was the only women's match of the evening, and the fact that Bailey had her eyes on this match Makes complete sense, but she didn't cash in. She walked back to the women's locker room and said, nah, I'm gonna wait, because I just won yeah. this briefcase. 
barely coming out. You guys saw our reactions in live time, and I'm so glad that that was a thing. My moment of the night was barely with the fake. Yeah, 100%. Um, it was a swerve. It, it wasn't expected. We're, we're and then she, Scott, yes. Yeah, it, it wasn't expected. It wasn't booked for Bailey to even have a fake cash in or cash in. And the fact that it happened, it made the match better. It made the uh, the mind games kind of get to Alexa Bliss in her own way. We almost saw because of it. Yeah, because Bailey could have lost via roll up there, or Charlotte Flair could have hit a natural selection, or really anything to get the title back on Charlotte Flair. But uh, it didn't work on Alexa Bliss. She obviously hit the Twisted Bliss off of the top rope and won this match. But more importantly, Bailey has her eye on that SmackDown Women's Championship. She's made that clear. Very clear. And I'm very excited to see what unfolds over the rest of the season with Alexa Bliss being my champion and Bailey being my Miss Money in the Bank. And now Charlotte Flair, that was her rematch clause mm -hmm. opportunity. I will have to imagine she is going to take a break from yes. title scene. Title scene. Uh, I do have a good idea for her. Um, she would be in a very fun feud. That's long. Cool. Jess, I want to actually ponder something with you. Remind me after we're done recording. Um, it has to do with possibly some new faces similar to the next match of the day. Can you want to tell me more about your triple threat? Uh, the co-main event was a match of three debuts. Uh, Dragunov, obviously the, the current United Kingdom champion in real life, uh, he doesn't have that title. Now, because in this universe we only do Raw and SmackDown, so he does not have a title around his waist, but he does have a win because he did beat the Boogeyman and Dominic Die Jacobic. Very good, fun triple threat match. Dragunov obviously having the size difference in the match being the smallest competitor in the ring. Boogeyman coming back to Judgment Day, I, I thought it fit well for the pay-per-view. Uh, obviously Dominic Dijakovic, uh, an NXT gold, a black and gold member, uh, probably one of my favorite wrestlers during the last stage of the black and gold era of NXT. His matches with Keith Lee were, were amazing, Adam Cole, Finn Balor, I could keep going. Uh, and this match was honestly fun. pretty fun. Uh, obviously, Boogeyman showed out. I showed out with Dragunov, and Dominic Dijakovic showed out. But in the end, Dragunov uh, hit his finishing maneuver on Boogeyman and got his big debut win. All of these guys have contracts with SmackDown. Uh, this match wasn't for a SmackDown contract. I won all of these guys when I won Money in the Bank pay-per-view when I won all the DLC packs. So, dragging off with a big victory, but I'm very excited to see what happens with him in the future. I will probably announce that after uh, talking about the main event. Mm -hmm. And Boogeyman and Dominic Dijakovic, they will definitely be utilized in this season because I, I love Boogeyman's character and uh, Dijakovic is, is very fun to watch. Yes, you have a lot of talent on your roster that still has a lot of untapped, untapped potential. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember seeing Cameron Grimes saying, this guy can, can be a new standout on SmackDown. We yeah. haven't seen him since. True. I hope we don't see the same for Dijakovic, who, who looked incredible. Boogeyman, I'm sure in your head, the ideas are just flowing. Yes. Um, like I have a feud right off the bat for him. With that being said... Same thing with Dijakovic and Dragunov. Cool. That's all I asked. Yeah. That was my question. You answered it right there, yeah. Jesse. But my big question of the day is your main event. We didn't know who Randy Orton's opponent was. The fans just said that they wanted him. Mm -hmm. You can't have a pay-per-view at this point without Randy and team. Yes. This case, he didn't defend his title. And mm -hmm. thank God he didn't. Because he would have lost his title. Yeah. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Brock Lesnar came out. Yeah. Honestly, in the Discord and in the YouTube comments, I don't think anyone mentioned Brock Lesnar. I, I saw Sami Zayn. I saw Karrion Cross, Seth, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Robert Roode, or Bobby Roode, whatever you want to call him. Uh, I, I've, a lot of people mentioned a lot of different type of wrestlers, and Brock Lesnar wasn't mentioned at all. I remember Christian and I had that discussion. I, I forget, it might have been a pay-per-view or maybe a random It was on an episode. Raw. Most of our discussions happen on air nowadays. Yeah, and uh, I remember you brought up how bad the, the Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton match was at SummerSlam a few years ago when obviously Randy Orton got cut up. And uh, I said, screw it, let me pull the trigger on it. I was going to do it this season um, on a bigger stage. But uh, I mean, hey, when people want to see Randy Orton, 
in a non-title match because it was going to be against Karrion Cross, but he did lose to AJ Styles. So I can't force a title match for a guy that just lost. It's just not my, that's not my go-to, or it's, it just doesn't make sense booking-wise. Uh, but Brock Lesnar, dominant United States champion, and Randy Orton has been looking great this season too. I think this is Randy Orton's first loss he took this season. So not a bad guy to lose to. He is the respective United States champion, and Randy Orton didn't look bad to me. He didn't get dominated. Uh, just didn't last as long as Brock Lesnar could. Uh, Brock Lesnar still. He's still dominant. I'll say that. I have, I have two points, Jesse, and I'll let you get off whatever you want to get off. First point is Brock being the United States champion, Randy being the World Heavyweight champion. Huh? What does that mean for the division moving forward? Does this shake it up at all? I mean, Brock Lesnar just beat what many see as your main champion. Mm -hmm. He's your mid card champion. What does this do for the divisions, or is that kind of, I explain, talk to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll explain how I feel right now. Obviously, I know there's going to be people that say, oh, both Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton again, because Brock Lesnar beat your World Heavyweight Champion. I have different ideas for both of these guys, but I will announce it right now. Randy Orton will be defending his World Heavyweight Championship next SmackDown episode. In the main event, but in the first match, of the evening of Friday Night Smackdown, I'm going to have five men compete for a shot at Randy Orton's championship this same night. Randy is going to defend his title tomorrow, or next episode. The next, the next, next Smackdown. Smackdown. In the main event, obviously against the winner, whoever wins the Fatal Five Way, obviously the opponents, or the wrestlers, to be named later. Wow, that is a jawbreaker of an announcement mm -hmm. and well if you, uh, you saw you saw him lose tonight obviously he's the champion he lost to obviously Brock Lesnar who's night the United States champion but we saw Randy Orton lose for the first time and I have different ideas for both of these guys I don't want to do Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton for the championship not that I'm afraid Brock Lesnar will become a dual champion it's just I have a different storyline for Brock Lesnar him being my mid card champion and I want to remain that way but I will give the opportunity to five superstars on my roster. Whoever wins that match in the opening match of next SmackDown will be in the main event against Randy Orton for the World Heavyweight wow. Championship. That just made SmackDown a can't miss episode. And Jess, I can't wait to play. Um, what a pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. What would you call match of the night? Uh, question. I really liked the, the women's match. Tonight. Even though it was the only women's match, uh, I, I thought it had obviously the swerve there with Bailey. It was very competitive. Uh, probably the most competitive match of the evening. Uh, honestly, I'll take that back. I think the main event. The main was, event delivered. Man. Yeah, the main event delivered. It delivered more than it did in real life, obviously, with Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. I'm glad I did it. Uh, Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar was definitely match of the night. Number two, I'll put Alexa Bliss. Cool. For sure. Cool. I liked cool. I liked I liked the triple threat match. I liked AJ and Pete. I liked the tag match. I liked all the matches here tonight. No bad matches. No, no, no bad, bad matches. matches in my in my eyes. Uh, but definitely the match of the night, uh, Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton for sure. And then I'll, I'll give the 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 women's match uh, probably. Yeah, and I want to hear what the fans got to say. What was match of the night? What was moment of the night? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think all the five matches were bad? I don't take any offense to SmackDown. Speaking of SmackDown, um, we don't gotta worry about them for a little bit. The next pay-per-view is going to be a Raw pay-per-view in just two weeks when Cyber Sunday comes to a city near you. Be on the lookout, guys. I think I might be doing polls in the Discord as well as um, YouTube. I just gotta figure out how Discord works exactly and if polls is a thing, I'm pretty sure it is. Somebody told me so. Yeah, I think it might. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta chat with my <coughs> Discord people and see how, how, how to do such a thing. But anyways, Cyber Sunday is coming soon where the fans, where you guys watching right now can vote in for stipulations. You guys can vote for what things are on the line. You guys can vote for tag team names. I'm making it super interactive this year. Super creative ideas as well. So super exciting times to be a fan, Jesse. And I'm just gonna say as far as the you after that, I'm not gonna give it away just yet, but um, you've been outside recently, right? Mm -hmm. Every day. It feels like summer. It feels like summer. Guys, thank you for watching. As always, Jess, it was your show, it was your pay-per-view. Do you have anything you'd like to say to the fans before 
we depart? Um, no, I, I think we covered everything. I, I obviously announced a big announcement. Randy I'll Orton say it for you, Jesse. In the main event next SmackDown. Tune in to the next SmackDown. We are on episode, I believe it was 31. I don't know. The next SmackDown episode, when you see SmackDown in, 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 in uh, the subheader, please click that. Look at me in the eyes. You're not going to want to miss it. I know some secrets. I know who's in the Fatal Fireboy. Tune in. That's how I'm going right. Tune in to Raw, too, because I got, I got Bloodline coming next week or next episode. Okay. It's going to get real. It's going to get raw. And it's coming at you in a very short time. Jesse, thank you as always, my friend. Um, I lost 3 2, but I'm, I'm aware of my heart. You're I, getting better. I, I wouldn't have made a mess. At least it wasn't 4 1 or 5 0. You know what? I'll take the compliment, even though that sounded like a jab. Thank you guys for watching as always. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And join the Discord. Yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, but ring the bells as well, guys, and uh, we'll see you on. The other side of the universe. Peace. Yeah. Yeah, I got the game all in my hand. Ooh, and yeah. Pop out with the drip and make a fan drool. You could risk it if you want. This ain't no fan duel. Yeah, I'm in a band's cool. Yeah, stabbing for the breeze.